Thank you, everyone. Uh, so my name is uh, Nadav. I'm coming from Israel, um, the Department of Science Teaching in the Weizmann Institute. So I'm going to, to uh, show you today the Grouper. It's an AI tool that we developed um, to group and personalize students' performance and help teachers uh, be like an assistant for, for the teachers. We also be sharing this uh, tool with everyone. It's, it's going to be an open source. Um, a little bit of context where I'm coming from because it's a, somewhat related to the way the tool is working. Um, this is our department. Um, you can see probably from the picture that the budget for gardening is much higher than the budget for research. Sometimes, yeah, uh, we, for finishing any research, we need to go and ask for a little bit budget from the uh, gardeners. Uh, when we're not gardening, so we do a lot of research and development, the one that I'm going to show you. Um, we also develop quality performance, uh, professional content for um, science teachers all over the country, and we mainly responsible for teacher training, national-wide teacher training in the sciences. These are the different um, disciplines we are uh, responsible for, and one of our major platform based on Moodle, but heavily customized, is called Petel. It's a combination, I showed it a few years ago in one of the conferences, so maybe some of you knows it already. It's a combination of OER catalog on one hand, it's a Moodle plugin, and also a social network, another Moodle plugin. The OER catalog is a little bit similar to the Moodle net, but for more activities, and you can preview activities, copy activities, share different stuff, I will show you later. And uh, the social network, another way for teachers to engage with each other and share activities. Why it is so important, again, for you maybe taking this tool back to your institutions, the base of this AI working is um, depending on the data coming from a special activity that is duplicated many times and used by many teachers. If you have different activities, this will not work. So, so consider it when you're um, thinking how you wish to implement this in your institution. So for a long time, everything was peaceful. And then from time to time, uh, researchers come into the department and uh, Tanya came into the department and wanted to break everything up, uh, talk to the teachers, how can we improve, how can we help you? Giora uh, is supervising, is the PI supervising Giora's research and I'm just trying not to break anything. And like any good research, also looking at what Martin is doing, we, we try to use AI, we don't, we don't just think with our own brains. We try to use AI and we use DALI. Everybody probably knows DALI. Yeah, you, you try to describe some kind of scenario and, and you get a picture. And, and we ask um, DALI, this open AI, um, please draw us a picture, sorry, please draw us a picture of a research asking teachers what's their greatest challenge in teaching students. And as you can see from the nice pictures, uh, it, it, like um, telepathically try to uh, direct us, you should probably go to different groups of teachers and ask this, not just few of them. And asking this question to the teachers, we got a few, a few uh, responses, but one of them that really uh, was interesting and related to something we can solve with AI, a uh, teacher wanted to help students understand the gaps early on uh, with misunderstanding or misconceptions. And uh, this is what gave us the idea that we should identify students' knowledge, put them in profiles, all this in real time. Uh, so it will help teachers immediately when they are, uh, I don't know, testing or diagnosing kids, uh, students in classes. And then, also provide the teachers uh, tailored responses for each profile. Uh, this is to scare you a little bit, but 
I think if you are teaching, you, you should probably know this. This is the matrix of grades you see in the quiz. A lot of questions probably, and, and all those students. How can you tell if two students got 72 or, I don't know, other grades? How can you tell if they have uh, misconceptions or misunderstanding on the same subject? You actually don't. You need to go very carefully and try to um, put together little clusters of uh, students' performance and, and try to understand uh, what's the main characteristic of, of this kind of, kind of uh, group. This is where we try to partner the teacher and AI and, and give a solution. So uh, Tanya and Giora took some time and did a lot of research and finally discovered or, discovered or came up with ideas and, and algorithms how to use machine learning. Machine learning, is, as you know, is the basic part of AI. Yeah? The deep learning is the one that you use with a lot of data, but machine learning is a little bit simpler. The whole process was very easy because I wasn't involved. I just got the bottom line. This is what you should do. Then started the real, the real challenge. We took uh, developers, um, UX, UI experts and, and the teachers, as you can see in this picture, as, and we try to develop the interface. So it'd be very easy for the teachers daily to use it, because sometimes it's hard to understand what the AI is um, giving us as output. And this is the interface that, uh, actually this is the tool in Moodle that eventually we came up with. Uh, you choose an activity, a quiz in your, in your course, and it immediately uh, clusters, group together different students according to their profile. Some of them are failing in something, some of them are successful in some, some other questions, but they have similar properties. And, okay, something also interesting for teachers that want to know how we came up, how the AI, some kind of explainability, how the AI came with those groups, we showed them the entire data set. It's a national-wide data set of the same quiz given to hundreds of teachers with thousands of students. And you can see for each cluster, for each group, it's, it's the columns, if, if you want to see. And, and the question, sorry for the Hebrew, I couldn't translate it. Um, and the questions, you can see some are failing, some are partially failing, some are successful, successful in some areas. Uh, so teacher can a little bit understand and relate to the groups, the AI, because there is sometimes a lot of um, rejection from the teachers. They know the students. I'm, I'm not sure why this student is in group uh, A or B. It is not logical. We also, because of this, we also enable them to drag and drop students if they think they know the student better than the AI. Another thing, and when the teacher is clicking or hovering over the eye uh, icon, you can see a little bit more explanation for the teachers. So they know all the students in this group, in this cluster, they are probably have some difficulties. This is physics, so they um, apply, they have some difficulties applying Newton's law, Newton's third law. Um, and another thing, intercepting data for, uh, yeah, interpreting, sorry, interpreting data from figures. So this gives the, the teacher some idea of what's the common property dominators of th these students. Now, after diagnosing those students, we want to take it further. We want to give them some follow-up activities. If they are very good, we want to give them something more advanced. If they have some difficulties, we want to get them training again. So we have three options. One of them I don't like because it enables the teacher to take all the list of the students offline and give them some activity. I don't like it because I don't have the data. And if I don't have the data, I'm not happy. I cannot do anything. <laughs> so, but teachers like it. They have some magic voodoo and they know how to, do, how to teach them whatever, and the second option is recommendations by other teachers. I will immediately show, you, show it to you. And the last one is um, the teacher can get recommendations from the OER catalog. I, if you remember the first slides, 
We have an, uh, an OER catalog, uh, a lot of metadata. We're using one of, um, you know, Mike Church Churchwood's metadata plugin, amazing plugin. Um, so it took us a long time to add metadata to OER uh, objects. And this is how we can uh, recommend the, um, the AI can recommend the teachers what could be the follow-up uh, activity. Um, and let's see that. This is a small snapshot of the OER catalog. You can see the whole syllabus, uh, all the filters. Teacher can just pick whatever. It, it first recommends what it should probably give the students as follow-up, but teacher can freely do whatever they like. Um, after the teacher choose the activity, they can also choose from their own course. If they have something that is not on the OER catalog, they can, what, 10, 10 more hours, I see, okay, good. <laughs> Sorry. Um, so after teachers, a teacher is choosing the activity, it, it also um, being asked to describe it a little bit for the fol following two ch teachers. Let's oh, so different teachers did it. And once the, the teachers explain what, why they choose to use that follow-up uh, follow uh, activity, other teachers coming to this, the same activity can see a list of teachers they know with their explanation, and they can say, okay, let's, let's do what they did earlier and um, allocate this activity it goes immediately in, in the course flow in the same unit, just after the activity that they failed or misunderstood or knew better. And okay, th that was the, the, the explanation how, how the thing is working, how the tool is working. Uh, a little bit of um, statistics and, and response feedbacks from the teachers, all the positives, the negative one we just didn't show you, so you, you know. You get, you get the thing, and we published it in a few um, places. So if you want to know all the research behind it, all the data, the raw data, it's all out there. Um, what next? What next? This was only for closed, closed questions, because the AI, AI need numbers. It's not, uh, it cannot analyze abstract things relatively. The next thing we are now uh, also um, pushing into production is the ability to get open text, open questions, use NLP. Uh, it's a little bit difficult because it's Hebrew NLP, you see it in English, but it's Hebrew NLP and it um, you know, give, gives meanings to parts of the text. And this is based on deep learning, not just machine learning. And it goes and, and can tell the teacher uh, what rubrics of um, what rubrics the uh, categories the students was using in I hope I'm explaining myself correctly were using in the um, uh, answer. It's uh, very very interesting. A little bit scary for teachers to see that the machine can understand what what the student is actually uh, writing about the answer, uh, but also. Like everybody else said before, this is an assisting for the teachers. It's only recommending the teacher what he should probably give grade to the students for. That's it. Some roadmap for the futures. Basically, we would love everybody to use it. We'll get a lot of data. Everybody will be happy, not just us. Uh, the bigger the data, the accurate the calculations. This is the roadmap in very, very short. You will probably see the, a, lot of pe a lot of people were involved. Credit to everybody. It's not just only a few of us. Uh, and I hope no question, no time for questions, huh? Good. Okay, you know where I'm standing outside. Everybody can ask any questions.